Okay, so I'm recording now and I'm going to put this in presentation mode. Okay, so as always, um, thanks everyone for coming. Um, I'm, I'm still enjoying preparing the class and then giving the class. And I think this is also mainly because um, all of you are coming and also making questions and participating. So I think it's, it's great. So, so thanks a lot. Uh, today, we are going to uh, cover, as I said uh, in the mail, uh, we will learn how to compute the broadening coefficients due to collisions with uh, neutral collisions with neutral hydrogen. So, very very simple idea is that um, it's a mechanism and is intrinsic from the the transition, uh, the spectral line of interest, and these uh, collisions with hydrogen they will enhance the the profile. Uh, so the idea is that it's something that is related with transition itself, and but can can enhance the the profile compared to that uh, resulting from the relative transfer equation. So the idea is that if we, for example, if we synthesize a profile including these collisions and then we try to invert it without including the collisions, the code will be able to fit the profile. But for that, we will need to add extra perturbations basically micro turbulence and also maybe temperature. So the idea is that this will happen if we have an observation from the sun. So in any case, if we include or not this collision, the profile, the, the code will fit the profile, but the atmospheric parameters will be more accurate if we include the collisions with hydrogen. So this is something that was, I think available in CERF since I don't know, 10 or 15 years ago, Vasilio. So a while ago, and then also in our age is available and we also include it in, in design. So it's a correction that allows to, to, to make a better estimation of the atmosphere because we are accounting from intrinsic um, atomic uh, properties uh, uh, during the computation of the profiles. So then um, the theory, there's a lot of papers, so I think the first ones are probably these two that I show here, but uh, there's a lot of uh, papers. So you can, if you want to uh, understand a bit more how the theory works, you can start with those prof uh, papers. And we will use, um, so the idea is that in the initial, in the beginning, when uh, those uh, publications appear, they have tables with uh, some parameters that you need to use for computing the, um, the broadening coefficients. But after that, I think at early 2000, um, <clears throat> the, the people pushing for, for this theory, they develop a code that interpolated the values inside these tables. So, so what we are going to use and, and learn how to use today is that code that allow us to really given uh, the spectro spectroscopic information of the transition how to uh, receive the, the broadening of the collision of, uh, um, so the broadening coefficients due to collisions. Uh, I will show you how to download it and how to install it today. And also I will show you how to run it. <clears throat> uh, we will use the, the version that is called this way. I think it's the cross section and is extended because the first and the second one, they had a given table and it has uh, values. And if the, um, if the value that we needed to use fall uh, outside the table, then the code uh, complained because it was saying that it was falling outside the tables that they initially have. And I think this extended is uh, a bigger table. So basically a special transitions that for any reason they need a special value that it was not contemplated in the, in the first uh, publications now is included. So it's essentially the same concept, but I think this one is a, a bit better or a bit more flexible. Um, <clears throat> as always, what I'm going to do today is explain you the motivation and then how to use the code, but I will not enter in details or in equations. So then I recommend you to, to at least read the readme files inside the program distribution, but also the publications. If you want to understand a bit more from where this theory comes and, and how to really interpret uh, what, what we are doing when we include the, um, the collisions, the broadening coefficients. 
we will cover a few example, examples. And what I'm going to do is to show you at least three. One is a simple example, and the other two, they require an additional um, um, modification. So it's a, a bit different, but the idea is that I think with those three examples, you basically cover most of the examples. So then you will be able to start with the transitions and you don't know how to compute uh, the broadening coefficient. And then more or less develop uh, the steps that I will show you. And then you will be able to compute uh, for almost any case. But um, yes, and those examples and explanations uh, are probably a bit better explained in this uh, file. That is a paper that I resubmitted today. So let's hope uh, it gets uh, <laughs> um, accepted for publication. And the idea is that it's in Dropbox. So you can read it and, and there is, a, I think, a, a better explanation of things that I will show you today. And also you have a long list of, uh, I think most of the candidate spectral lines, uh, photospheric spectral lines for PKE, CST and other missions uh, are there. So, so you can really try to check if what I show you today, you understood it, you understand it with uh, different spectral lines. But in any case, I, um, okay, yes. And um, yes, so the idea is that uh, you can try to repeat, as I said, the computations done in the paper. And, and the idea is that if I'm correct, in general, the theory mainly works with um, neutral um, transition. So, um, I think single or double ionized, uh, I think they don't work, but this is something that I'm not really uh, sure because there are some, there have been some modifications with years, but in general, all the transitions that I will show you today, how to compute are uh, neutral. And for the most common single ionized uh, transitions that are magnesium two, uh, calcium two and barium two, you can, found, you can find the, the values in, in, in this publication in, in Barkham 1998. So in general, <clears throat> I think it's, it's, it works perfectly with neutral, but I'm not sure if you can use additional ones. So in that case, I, I think it's better to, to contact Paul, Paul Barkham and, and check with him. So my recommendation, if, if you use for neutral and you have an observation with an instrument working in a, a special uh, spectral range where you need to characterize the lines, then try to use uh, the, the code and the method that I, I will explain today. But I strongly recommend that after doing all this, the steps, uh, double check with, uh, at least with Paul Barton, because this is what I usually do. And in general, I would say that 95% for the transitions, I, I got it right, but sometimes there's some special thing that he, he quickly realized. So, so please always uh, try to check with, with him. And also I really encourage you to, if you make the effort to characterize the lines, just put a table on, on your publication and then allow others to, to have access to it. So then you save time to other people and also uh, they can do the same. So at the end, uh, we can really uh, save time helping each other. So, <clears throat> okay, so just let's go to the web page. Um, so the idea is, <clears throat> this is the link I put in the in the mail, and if not, I will I will put it in the it was in the presentation. So it's a GitHub. Then you just uh, download the code, and it will be like this. And we will move inside this folder, this uh, extended folder. But then in principle, you could also use the others, but you can see that in general, the most updated one is this one. So then um, if you go to the folder, that is this one. So you have uh, some things there. I'm very bad at Fortran. So I just um, have these instructions. So you go to the folder. That is here. So you can see that I'm in cross in extended. And just for compiling, if you have e fortunes, just copy these three. Okay. <clears throat> and then the code is compiled. You don't need to do anything else. And then uh, for running, for running it, uh, just write this. And then the code will ask you for an input file. In our case, is this lines.input. 
if you just type lines.input, I will show you later what we need to put inside, but the idea is that you type this. And then <clears throat> the code will ask you for the name of the two outputs that it needs to, to write. I usually just type the same name, lines, and then the extension is long. And then it will ask you for a short, and then I type the same name and then short. And then we have already finished. So with this, we have already compiled the broadening um, coefficients due to collisions with hydrogen. The idea is that the output, we will have two, long and short. Uh, just let's check it and then we will go uh, step by step. So we have here long. So you will see that there's some information here and then short. That is essentially the same one as long but this is ready for uh, be uh, read by, by a machine. So if you have a lot of multiple transitions on, and then you just want to read the columns, then here there are no comments and, and no titles. So it's basically the same. And this one has an explanation. Okay. So then it was very easy. Uh, so it's just, you compile with the three sentence that I, I put here, then you just call the, the output uh, function. Uh, or the executable. And then you need to provide a file that is called, in this case, is lines.input, but you can call it anyway. Uh, and then you, you type that you want the long and the short. And then the idea is that in long, you will have the collision, um, the broadening coefficient that you, we will use later. Okay, so now let's go uh, to check what, what is inside um, lines.input, that is the file that we, we want to, to use. And in this case, uh, we will need um, several information. So yes, let me, I hope you can see it. So I'm trying to move this down. Oh, does it move? Okay, I have it there. Okay, so then, um, you need at least if you, you if you want to follow my my method, you need to open three NIST tabs. Uh, so one second, sorry, is that Zoom is getting in the middle? Okay, now I have it. So, so the idea is that you need one tab where you are going to uh, look for the lines. So just like this. And then uh, you need two tabs where you will look for levels. So you just type here in levels and then another one. And I will show you now why. Um, let's start first with a transition of interest. So this is uh, in Armstrong, this is 50 to 50. So um, this line is 50 to 50.2 is the, the line in the optical uh, range, in the visible range with the strongest effective lambda factor and is one, one of the famous lines. And it's very close to one line that is also an iron line that is uh, located at 50 to 50.6. And it's also sensitive to the magnetic field and they are so close that in general, you, you usually observe them together. So we are going to try to <coughs> um, characterize or compute the, um, the, bro the, the broadening uh, parameters with, uh, for these two lines. So then it's, we go to the um, lines database and we type that this is iron one, okay? And then we said that is 50 to 50, and then 50 to 51, okay? And we put this in Amstrad, okay? And then we, cl we click retrieve data. So then we have two transitions here, okay? So then uh, with this information, we are now going to fill um, the lines.input, okay? So just try, let me try to make this a bit smaller so then you can see uh, what is here. So then I have uh, three, oh, sorry, five transitions that we will try to reproduce today. And then you can see how, how, how we can mm, uh, configure the file. There are some comments in general, they are from, from Paul. So, so usually, uh, he revised the, the, the files that I compute and, and sometimes he had corrections or he just says, okay, I agree with that. And also I added here uh, the explanations that I'm going to say now, but you can have them here. Okay, so then 
it says that uh, we need to provide um, the element and the ionization uh, level. So in this case, it's iron one. Then we need to provide wavelength. So we are we have these two here. So 50 to 50.286, and then 50 to 50.6456. Then you have it here. And then it says that you need to provide the energy of the lower level and the upper level. So, and this is in centimeters up to minus one. So then you can see that we have here uh, 978, uh, so it's here. And then the same for the upper level, you have it here, okay? Then it says uh, energy limit and energy limit here that are these two. <coughs> We will go to, the, uh, to, to them later. Let's, let's go to the last parameters. But the idea is that uh, it's what they call the binding energy of the optical electron. So we will, we will discuss this uh, later. So just focus first on these four because this energy limit, it will change depending on the transition. So it's, a, it's something that we will, we will check now in detail. But these, um, these values, these four values, they are very easy to, to interpret from, from the NIST uh, information. So then the idea is that it's asking us for um, the angular momentum of the lower, uh, lower level and the angular momentum of the upper level. But this is the one that we have here in this, um, this electron, okay? So it's, it's not the total uh, that we usually have in the term, it's the one from the atomic, from the electronic configuration. So then, uh, the lower level, if this is an S, so it's a zero. And then the upper level we have here for S for P. So this is a P, this is one. So then it's zero, one. And the same here. So you have a four S, so this is zero. So we put zero here. And then the upper one is again for S for P. So then we have one here, okay? And then it's asking us for the J value. And this is the one provided in the term. So, so in this case, it's a zero. So we put here a zero. And then this one is one. So we put one. And then here is two. So we put two, this value. And then the upper level is three. And we put it here. Okay. So then I just repeat it again. So this L, um, not capital L, is the electron one. So the one from this electronic configuration. And then the J's are the, the ones from the, from the term, okay? <clears throat> so now, uh, and, and as always, if you have any questions, just stop me. If, if not, I, can, I will continue. So then uh, now let's go to the energy limit. And the idea is, um, as I said, it's defined as a binding energy of the optical electron. So in principle, you should assume that this is the ionization energy. But um, um, sometimes um, the, the level that we are using, it contains what they define as a optical electron, electron and a core electron. So in those cases, the energy that we need for, to remove or to define this binding energy, it's higher than the ionization energy. So the idea is that um, the recommendation that uh, they provide is Okay, uh, first, uh, uh, well, sorry. First, look, let's look for the um, um, uh, energy of ionization energy. So this is why I said that we need two taps for a level. So we, tap, uh, we, we type iron one, okay? And we can add here the term energy, and then we retrieve data. So then we go down until the end, and then we will see that the energy limit is uh, 63,737. So you can see that, for example, in some cases, this energy limit is that value. So those are the normal cases where, as I will explain later, the binding energy is the same as the ionization energy. So then, uh, for that reason, I said that you need one tap for, for knowing the, um, the energy of the uh, last uh, level or ionization level. But then now we need a second tap, and I will show you why, where in this case we will put the ionization level. So 
So if we are um, focused on iron, then it will be iron two. And also we will ask to uh, have the information of the term energy, okay? So, so here you can see that first level is this one and it's the same as the one we have here, okay? It's a three, three V six, four S. And you can see here is a three V six, four S, okay? So then what I was saying is, uh, <clears throat> In order to know if the energy that you need to put there is the ionization energy or is that energy plus a correction, what you need to do is to remove an electron from the, config the electronic configuration. So for example, in this case, we have a 3v6 for S2. So we have two electrons in, in the S orbital. So then if you remove that electron, what we will have is a 3v6 for S, 5b okay so now if we go to the first level of iron 2 we will have that is a 3v6 4s 5b so then removing one electron from this level is giving us the exact configuration of the ground level of iron 2 if that is the case then we we need to set as the energy the ionization energy. So this will be energy limit. So let me repeat it again. Just check what happens when you remove one electron from this electronic configuration and check if what you have is the same configuration as the ground level of the iron. So in this case, removing one here is 3v6, 3v6 4s, it's a 5d. So then if you go here, it's a 3v6, 4s, and it's a 5d. Okay, then let's try to do the same for the upper level. So we have here a complex configuration, but if we remove this 4P, you will have that is again a 3D6, 5D, 4S. So it's exactly the same one as you have as a ground level in, in iron two. Okay, so then for this reason, if we go back to, to the lines for the input, you will see that the energy limit for the transition 50 to 50.2 is the same and is equal to the, um, to the energy, to the ionization energy. Okay, so now let's go to the next transition to 50 to 50.6. And in this case, you can see that uh, the upper level, it has the same energy, so let's check. So we have 56, 5D, 4S, 4P. So if we remove this electron, then again, we have 3v6, 5d, 4s. So it's, it's exactly the same. But for example, in this case, it's a 3d7, 4p, 4s. So if we remove this electron, what we have is a 3v7. And this is not the ground level of iron 2. So in this case, we need to go to the level uh, list of uh, iron 2 and look for that uh, level. So in this case, it's a 3d7, 4p. So then we go here and we said, okay, this is a 3d7, but it's a 4f. And then this is a 3d7, but it's a 4p. So this is the one we are looking for. Okay, so then we need to add a correction that is related with this level. But you have several j's here. And the idea is that uh, the theory, it it's probably not accurate enough to really try to define which one of these energies you need to, to use. So then the, the advice from, from Paul is that ask Denise for the term energy and just pick that value. So you don't need to really check which one of the J's is remaining from, from removing one electron. So just pick the, the, the term energy. That is the average between them. Well, not the average, it's, it's a term energy. So, so then you can see that uh, 13,196, it's um, included in this comment. So the idea is that now you need to have this value, that is the ionization energy, plus the correction from this extra um, uh, electron or core energy, how they, is how they define it, to have the proper binding energy, the proper E limit. So 
So then for this reason, you have this um, uh, energy that is higher than the ionization energy. Okay, so let's, so if there's any question until now, just stop me. If not, I will, I will just do it for additional um, example. Um, in this case, it will be the iron 6173. Three, um, six, one, seventy-four. Okay. So um, we have again. Let's check how to complete the the all the the the, the columns. So the wavelength is provided here. Then the energy of the lower level is one. Let's jump a limit for one second. Then let's go to the energy of the upper level, that is this one, we have it here in blue. And then let's compute the L uh, from the electronic configuration. So this is 4S, so it's a zero. This is 4P, so this is a one. And then J is one. And then the J of the upper level is zero, okay? So now um, let's check what happens when we remove an electron from the lower level. And if we remove this 4s, we end with having a 3d7 4p. That it's exactly the same as before. So we have to, at the ground level, is a 3d6. So we need to move higher. And the 3d7 4p is this one. So then it means that we need to add to the ionization energy this term energy, that is 13,000. OK. <clears throat> And in the case of the upper level, if we remove this 4p, then we have a 3d7 4f. Okay, so then now we go back and we see that the 3d7 4f is a, energy with, a level with lower energy. And then in this case, the term energy is 2000. That is what I put it in the, in the comments. So then this one, we added 13,000. And to this one, we added 2000, okay? So then essentially you have um, two cases. One case where when you remove one electron from the configuration, uh, it's the ground level of the iron two. So then you just need to add the ionization energy. And the second case is that when you remove the electron, you realize that it's an excited level of iron two. Uh, so then you need to add to the ionization energy, that levels information, uh, energy, respect to the ground of iron two. So then the binding energy, it's, it's a bit high, okay? So is there any question until this point? Okay, okay, so then, um, then the idea is that, as I said before, you just type, um, this command, and then you write that this is the input, the one we, we used, and then you want a long and a short, and then you define the name. So then we have here long and short. So then if you go to the long, that is, um, I think it's defined as a human readable. Uh, so here you have the species, the wavelength, the energy from lower, upper level, and then the binding energies, then all the information that we provided, and then the important thing that we need for, for SER, for desire, and also for, for our age is these two. These are sigma and this is alpha. So these two are the cross section uh, coefficients that we need to provide in, in, in SER. They are the two columns that we have in the lines a file, if you remember. And if not, I can, I can open it now. Um, so, so we put those two values uh, as a columns, and, and then with that, the, the code will read it automatically and will include. So you don't need to, to, to do anything else. The important thing is that alpha is dimensional less. So it, has, it doesn't have dimension. So you can uh, copy it like, like it is, like this one. But sigma uh, needs to be uh, put in, in CGS. So then, I put it in the presentation, so we will see it later, but I also put it here. So for SER, you need to take the value, the output from, 
from, from the um, program and then multiply it by this one, okay? So let me go, maybe I can, yeah, I can go back. So online course, maybe any, any example, uh, I don't know, maybe this one. So we have, yeah, here we have lines LT. So then for 50 to 50, okay, let's look at this one. So then we have that in the long, the alpha is 0, uh, 0254. And then we have here that we put 0, 0254, okay? So the value that directly the program uh, prints, then you can put it here. But then you can see that this one is up to the minus 15. So then what we did, it was taking these uh, 205 and then multiply by that factor that is up to the minus 17. And then for this reason is up to, up to minus 15. Okay. Um, so I think, I think that's all uh, for these transitions. Uh, just, I added, um, I added the two 6301 and 6302 lines because in this case, uh, the process seems in the same. So if we go back to this, so if we put now 6301 and we put here 6303, and then <clears throat> if we look at the levels, uh, it seems that for me, it was, just remove one electron and it's again 3D6, 5D4S and then 3D6, 5D4S. So I think for me it was natural to assume that all those levels, they will be the ionization energy. But uh, I, I received this comment from Paul. So, so in principle, it seems that we should use it this way, but I'm, I'm not sure what, what is uh, that it's complicated. But again, for this reason, I, I recommend you to, to try it and always at least double check with, with Paul because it's just once and as soon as you have it ready, then you put it in your code and you will never change it in, in principle. Uh, so sometimes it's better to just uh, double check. Okay. Um, and I think that's all. Is there any question? No? Okay, so then let me go back to the presentation. So then <clears throat> my recommendation is try to run uh, the, the program just as I did, just compile it and, and check that it works in your computer. Uh, then try to repeat the process. So just uh, uh, try to start from zero and, and check if you were able to look for the energy values and, and for the uh, angular momentum and the total angular momentum and, and check that you, you got the, the right values. Um, and then I think if you already have some observations or you're planning to do some observation and there's a line that you believe that it will fall inside your spectral range that you will observe and it's not a common one, then try to look for it in, in the NIST and then try to uh, define the, the, the information like we did. And if it doesn't work uh, or if you feel that something is off, just let me know, I will quickly check it. But in principle, is just try to follow uh, the NIST and, and then try to see what happens when you remove the, the electron. And, and yes, and I think in the paper, it's, it's, we did uh, in the discussion uh, a test where we <clears throat> did the synthesis, including the broadening coefficients. And then we embedded uh, the profile, the synthetic profile, including or not the coefficients. Uh, just to check what happens. And you will see that uh, the code basically obtains the initial atmosphere when we, in, when we include the collisional coefficients. But if we don't include them, then the code need to add an artificial microturbulence and change a bit the, the temperature to reproduce the width of the profile. Um, so, so then I think it's important that if, if you can, that in, in our case, yes, to, to spend some time looking for the, 
or computing these coefficients because as I said, you, you do it once, but then you will have it for all the inversions and it will allow you to obtain a more accurate atmospheric parameter. Um, <clears throat> yes, I put it here again. Um, so you need to multiply sigma, alpha is, is fine, but sigma, you need to multiply it by, by this um, uh, um, trans transformation to, to have it in CGS. And, and yes, and I think that's, that's probably all. So next class, um, we will start with uh, Python wraps. I think we are ready. And if not, we, we will go step by step. And <clears throat> I will leave the computation of the chi-square value until I have time to revise <laughs> Vasilio's comments. But as it is the same for Ser and Desire, we, we will cover it at some point. But, uh, but I think it's better if we start already with the Python wraps because then you can start uh, already doing uh, inversions of observations or things while we uh, slowly cover RH and then Desire. So I think it's, it's good if we already start with uh, Python wraps. Um, and I think the next class for me is fine next Friday. So, so then uh, by next Friday, I'm not sure, but I think the easiest uh, uh, thing that we can do is to check, uh, to take uh, previous week um, uh, MHD simulation. Uh, let's see if we can download it. I, I already sent the, the mail to, to Matthias, so probably there are some problems in the server and they will solve it soon. So then we will take this atmosphere and we will transform it in parallel uh, because the um, parallel wrap, it's, it has some configuration, but this uh, step is really easy to, to do. So we don't need to really uh, understand or learn how to provide a lot of input. It was just, it would be just a simple one, but we will need to install basically the same libraries for running that step or for doing synthesis or inversion. So I think next week, I will try to uh, show you how to run it. And then uh, after that, you will probably try to install the Python libraries and make it work. And if we have a lot of problems, then the next class, Ricardo will try to show us, to show us how, to, how to install it. So, so we will basically cover the, the probably the, the Python wrap only for transforming the atmosphere. Okay, so I, I don't know if I, there's something left or if you have questions. Carlos, um, I have a question or yes, two. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, can you give me a sense of what those alpha and sigma are in, uh, in this, uh, you know, computation? And uh, the second question will be, if you don't use them, what kind of errors do you get in your-, in your Yes, so, so, so I think it's, Let's go to the so the first question. So Basilio, I I think it enters as a so how, how you put it in Ser? Where's Basilio? No, in, in fact, uh, you are you are trying to evaluate the 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 Van der Waals enhancement because uh, the enhancement of a line is a, a Doppler width and also a collisional width, okay? The collisional width is the Van der Waals, that is the collision. If you are not uh, setting these values, you are using the insole formula. This is a classical formula that it is, it, it is underestimated, the, the collisional broadening. Then uh, you will need to, to, to enhance this uh, value by the enhancement factor. This was classical in the, in the 70s. Mm -hmm. People was doing that. Uh, works with the insole formula this and one. then and yeah, uh, exactly. And then enhanced by a factor that it, it should be empirically determined because you, you cannot, the, the theory is not given that. Uh, the the Barclay formula, it takes into account collision with with uh, with uh, hydrogen. And then the alpha is, is the cross section. It has two parameters. Uh, is the cross section at the second takes into account a term depending on the velocity, but I don't know exactly I, I, I have read the, the paper yes. so, so many years ago, I don't remember pretty well, but the first one is, is a cross section and the second is a term that depends on the velocity. It, it, it calls it velocity factor. I, I don't remember exactly. Yeah, it, it, it is an exponent. Uh, so uh, I think the temperature gets some to this power 
uh, times something um, time. Yeah. Um, so it, it, it ends up in the exponent somewhere. Yeah. And so it, 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 it formalizes the temperature dependence via the, the, the velocities. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. So, 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 so it, it, it enters when, when you compute the width of the line is one of the factors that enters in the equation. Yeah. And yes, I think the yes, microturbulence yes. is also the same. No, but the microturbulence no. is just a convolution with a, the microturbulence. The, no, the, the micro, micro, the micro, the micro, the micro, the micro, the micro in, but this is an, an enhancement of the Doppler width. The, you have two terms, the Doppler okay. width okay. and the, and this is um, the, the, the shape of the line is the convolution yes. between yes. The, the, the Gaussian is a Doppler. Uh, this yes. is increased by the microturbulence and also the Lorentzian, that this is the, the, the collisional broadening that is a colli- then the convolution of both profiles a gaussian plus a lorentzian is a void yeah. profile yeah. and then yeah. this the the a value the damping the the, the collisional yeah. parameter is determined by these two coefficients okay. or by the classical usual formula that this yeah. is uh, yeah. il, il determined but this is not yeah. uh, accurate yes. enough yes okay. yes yes so Jana, so i i always think as a um it affects the width of the of the profile yeah. that you get. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. No, I understand that. I, yeah. just, I so, wanted to yes. and, get and those then, two parameters where they, where they come from. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And and then the test that I did here is is that. So let me go back. Uh, so so what I was saying is that uh, we did a synthesis uh, that is the black line. So this is a uh, 1.5 micron, uh, one spectral line. And then we embedded the, so we did the synthesis with the uh, um, coefficients included, the, the collisions. And then we embedded uh, in blue is with the same uh, atomic information and in red without including the coefficients. So in both cases, the fits are very good. So you can see that uh, black, red, and blue, they are basically the same line. Mm-hmm. But if you check the atmosphere, uh, the black one is um, the original one, the blue one, is the one uh, with collision, and you can see that it's the same. But you see that the red one it needs to uh, change a bit the temperature, so it's uh, increasing the temperature a bit here, and it's a bit cooler down. But then, for example, in microturbulence, we had zero, mm-hmm. but then the code added microturbulence, mm-hmm. and then the magnetic field is not exactly the same. So the code is playing with atmospheric parameters that can change the shape of the profile sure. to reproduce the effect that you will have with the intrinsic information of the transition. So essentially you are adding a correction that it would not be necessary if you had the, the collisional uh, parameter. Mm-hmm. Okay, does it make sense? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I just wanted to have a sense of the yes. amplitude yeah. of the effect. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. So, so basically, for example, in this case, you have one kilometer uh, microturbulence, mm-hmm. where in the other case you had zero. And the temperature is a bit higher also. Yeah, sure. and um, yeah. The, this, these two parameters enters in a complicated formula that you have a expansion. It's a, mm-hmm. it's a complicated formula. It's a, mm-hmm. a entangled one. Yes. <laughs> and then because yes. this is parameterized in this in this way, okay. But yes. I, I think one one is the, the cross section and the other is a parameter to correct for for a correction taking okay. account. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Thank okay. you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I think. That all, I think. Uh, uh, yes, yes. Uh, yes. Carlos. So yes. for magnetic field diagnostics, I guess uh, these parameters are not very important from this figure 12, right? Uh, it's, it's more important for temperature, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Yes, yes. Well, yeah. Yeah. It, it depends if yeah. you are uh, determining, uh, evaluating the magnetic field using the forest of parameter, is not very important because the the the, the width of the line is not uh, entering. But yes. if you are uh, trying to determine the magnetic field using just Stokes I, then you will have a, a, a strong dependence because in this case the magnetic field comes out from the 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 width of the line, and then changing the the width a little, it is producing an effect of the magnetic field you are determining. If you are using just Stokes I, if you use the four no, you, you can see in this example that this mm-hmm. is not very important. But always you are getting better fits without adding 
um, uh, micro and so on. In this case, in the figure 12 case, you are using just one line and then the, the, the program can compensate easily the, 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 the error in the, in the width. When you are using many lines, you will need a, a, a perturbation in the atmosphere that is very complicated in order to reproduce, to, to, to fit or to match all the lines. And then uh, maybe you are uh, getting a bad result. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. I have another question, Carlos, the technical one. Okay. So I could not find the routine, the model, uh, modelador3.x in, in the C source code. Um, it should be there. No, I mean. It should be no, there. Oh, no, okay. Maybe, no, maybe no. I have some old versions. No, uh, but so, so you, you are looking for modelador3.f or .x? .x. But ah. you need to compile first. So, so if you remember uh, the other day, I, I said that um, you need to go, so let me go, I think I have it here, so I do this. Uh, so if you go here and then you do LS, uh, so, so you have, in, in this case, you have ser.x and yes. modelador, but this is because I first type this, fc, E Fortran and then modelador 3.x. So then with this, the code will look for modelador 3.f, that is the Fortran function, and then will compile the executable. So you need to type this first in your ser distribution. And then with this, uh, well, now it's saying that it's up to date. Okay, just let me remove modelador 3.x. And then if you type this, then it will compile the, it will look for modelador three and then it will compile these three. Okay. Oh, I see, I see. Thank okay. you. Yeah, so, so every time that you need to use some X that is there for executable, then you, you need to compile first uh, that. So when we make, uh, when we use make, it will just com uh, will compile the ser.x, but then for additional routines like modelador, modelador two, modelador three, and another routine that Basilio has been creating <laughs> over the time, you always need to, to specify that I you want to, compi to compile the executable related to that routine, okay? Okay. So, so just try to do this, and if it doesn't work, then just uh, write me an email or, or through this court, and we will check in, in case that um, something is happening. But basically, you, you need to compile first, mm. okay? Thank you. Okay. Okay. And the people already reported that we can't download uh, yes. Mura models, yes. right? From yes. 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 I sent a mail to Matthias uh, a few hours ago. So I think he probably will answer today or maybe uh, next week. And it's probably some, some error in the server. And as soon as he confirmed that it's working, then I will send a mail to everyone. Nice. Okay. Okay, so any additional questions? No? Okay. Okay, so then um, I think today's class was a bit short, but I think this is something that is good that you know how to do because as I said, you can do it once. Uh, I did it here, you will see that. I hope you will see soon uh, the paper published. And I did it for a lot of lines. So basically most of the lines that I thought that they were popular, uh, I put all of them here. So then I already have done it a lot, but sometimes you have additional transitions that are in the wing of an important line, like for example, calcium or sodium or something like that. And then you probably would need to, to do it. Um, and I think the process is not so difficult uh, as soon as you understand how, how to compute this uh, energy limit, that they are a bit different depending on the transition. So, so I hope this is helpful. Um, and again, if you, if you have any question, please ask me, or if not, we, we can talk through this call. Okay, so then uh, next week, we will start with the parallel wrap that I think is going to be um, very fun because we will, even those that of you that use SER uh, for a long time, you will see that 
now you can use it in a more comfortable way to to tackle a lot of pixels from long maps or, or series so then you will see that is uh, really helpful and also as as always is the basis that we also use in this side so everything you learn um, in the following weeks you will uh, use it later for for this side okay so then if there are no questions or comments um thanks again for for coming today and see you next week thank you very much okay bye bye thanks bye thanks bye 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 bye